Season 2, Episode 8, The Season Finale of My Girlfriend Wants to Kill Me. But first, I would like to thank Shudder for reaching out to me and for sponsoring this episode. If you guys have no clue on what Shudder is, I'm going to tell you about it right now. Excuse me for a moment. Crazy Mary, I'm trying to do a show. I think I should be the one to tell them about Shudder. Shudder is a premium streaming video service from AMC Networks. Shudder was built to specifically super serve fans of all degrees of thrillers, suspense, and horror. Shudder has the largest and fastest growing human curated selection of thrilling and dangerous entertainment. You'll have unlimited access to stream ad-free on your favorite devices like iOS and Android. Also available on Xbox One, Amazon Fire TV, Roku, and Google Chromecast. Shudder has a unique collection of exclusive and original films and series, horror classics, and blockbuster hits such as Creep Show, the new TV series based on the famous films by George Romero, which is actually my favorite. It's very addictive. Okay, thanks Crazy Mary. I'll take it from here. You can stream great thrillers, horror, and suspense for $5.99 per month or $56.99 per year. As a special gift, you can try Shudder absolutely free for 30 days by using my promo code Dark and Twisted. Now on to the show. Previously, on My Girlfriend Wants to Kill Me, 15 minutes had passed as Amanda hopped into her car and sped down the road for her meeting with Winthorpe. But as she was taking off an all-black car carrying Crazy Mary Slaughter and Detective Jackson pulled into the dimly lit parking lot. There she is, follow her. When in, walked Amanda. If she rats me out, that will be the last time the bitch breathes. There's no time to wait. Come on, said Crazy Mary, as they both snuck in through the side door. Please untie us. My friend is bleeding to death. He doesn't have much time, said Misty, as the man untied them. She was about to walk out. Misty, said Chandler, gaining just enough strength to call out to her. Before you go, I need to tell you something very important just in case I die. It's something that you need to know, and you need to know now. My Girlfriend Wants to Kill Me Season 2, Episode 8, The Season Finale Thunder rumbled in the distance as the strobes of lightning flashed across the sky. Lights in buildings flickered, hinting a storm was on the way. Just to let you guys know, there is a nasty storm on the way, stretching from here to Seattle. We'll be closing early tonight, said the manager of the coffee house, as the dark, hovering clouds slowly gathered above. 
Thanks for the heads up, said Winthorpe, shifting his eyes back to Amanda. And thank you, Miss Huffington, for agreeing to meet with me, especially at this time of night. I'll make this quick due to the storm on the way, said Winthorpe. Sure, now can you tell me what this is about? And what does Mary have to do with this? Said Amanda, squirming around in her seat and appearing paranoid and on edge. I'm sure you're familiar with David Baker's multiple murder trial, correct? Yes, of course, she replied, her voice trembling and unstable. And you know David Baker personally, correct? Asked Winthorpe, his eyes aggressively cracking her weakening facade. Yes, of course. We were all friends back in high school, said Amanda, nervously tapping her well-manicured nails on the table. Okay, look, I'm gonna cut to the chase. David and I, as well as many others, believe that Mary killed those people and she's framing David for the murders. I need you to tell me if you have any information regarding Mary that might clear his name, said Winthorpe, taking out his pen and pad, preparing to jot down notes. I haven't spoken to Mary since Christmas and it was brief. Sorry, but I have no info to help David, said Amanda. But Winthorpe was good at detecting body languages, and he knew that she was withholding information. You're lying, Miss Huffington, said Winthorpe boldly, his eyes continuing to invade her. You have no proof of me lying she said defensively as beads of sweat started to appear on her brow which was more indication that she was lying look i know you're scared of mary i know how frightening and intimidating she can be but think about the life of an innocent former friend of yours if he doesn't get the evidence that he needs can you honestly just let him die? Said Winthorpe, toying with her emotions as well as subconsciously infiltrating her thoughts. Amanda was mute, but her eyes spoke louder than words. Winthorpe knew damn well that she was hiding deep, dark, and twisted secrets for Mary in the diary of her mind and he was determined to pick the lock. Look, I know that you saw her last year because you told David that she had been carving his name into her skin. You also told her that you were worried about her and I can tell that you know more than what you're telling me. I can also tell that you're a good person, Miss Huffington. David even said so. He speaks highly of you. So please tell me any information that you have that might save an innocent man's life. Look, said Amanda, stirring her coffee nervously. David has always been a good guy, even back in high school. I have the utmost respect for him, but Mary, she's my friend and I can't betray her. If I tell you what I know, She'll kill me, and honestly, I'm surprised that you're not dead yet. You don't want to fuck with that woman, Mr. Adams. She's ruthless. She's deadly. She is, well, Mary Slaughter. I'll take my chances if that means saving an innocent man's life. I believe in justice. That's why I became an attorney. I won't rest until David Baker is a free man, said Winthorpe firmly. Thinking about what you just said, she has done things that you know about, said Winthorpe. I didn't say that. You're putting words into my mouth, said Amanda, defending herself. 
you know that she's evil and that she is a murderer or else you wouldn't have said what you just said about you being surprised that I'm not dead yet. Winthorpe was a tiger in the courtroom as well as on the field. He knew how to get answers out of a witness. Miss Huffington, think about poor David. Think about the victims. Think about the victims' families. You don't want that type of blood on your hands, said Winthorpe cleverly. The look on Amanda's face was of war between demons and angels. She fixed her mouth to speak as if she were about to say something. But instead, she said, Sorry, I have to go. The storm is coming said Amanda, making up an excuse to leave. Look, here is my room number. I will be staying at the JW Marriott Hotel for the next 24 hours. Please, if there's anything you can tell me to save David's life, for the love of God, come see me, said Winthorpe as he watched her urgently leave the coffee house and head into the storm. But in the booth next to them sat a couple of eavesdroppers, Crazy Mary and Detective Jackson, listening in the entire time. Let's go, said Crazy Mary as they exited the building as well. Let's keep an eye on her to make sure she doesn't change her mind, said Crazy Mary as they sped off into the distance. When Thorpe received a text message that intensified the urgency, trial is to begin in two days. Oh shit, muttered Winthorpe. Meanwhile, back at the police station in Seattle, Washington. Time in jail had taken a toll on my appearance as I sat there in my cell, wondering if Winthorpe had made any headway with Amanda. I was also still missing Misty. But right at that moment, things were about to get more difficult for me. Mr. Baker, you now have a cellmate to keep you company, said the guard, ushering a questionable looking man into my cell. Well, if it ain't David the Killer Baker, <laughs> you're pretty famous now, huh? joining the ranks of Manson, Bundy, and Dahmer. But then again, you've only killed women and animals. You're too much of a punk to go against a man, huh? Said the man with an evil grin. Listen, I don't know who you are, but don't fuck with me right now. I'm not in the mood. And I think it would be best if we stay out of each other's way and don't talk to one another, I said angrily. Oh, I'm not here to talk. I'm here to take care of you. What do you mean, take care of me? I asked as my eyes shifted downward to a pocket knife that the man was holding. Then, all of a sudden, he ran toward me, aiming to stab me. Meanwhile, back at the apartment of Amanda Huffington, there she was, lying in her bed, tossing and turning with racing thoughts of an innocent man being convicted of crimes that she knew damn well that I didn't commit. Or perhaps she would do the right thing and tell Winthorpe everything that she knows about Mary's secrets. However, she knew that if she did and if Mary found out she'd be murdered in cold blood, she was determined to remain 
silent, not just for herself, but also her unborn child that she was carrying. Meanwhile, as Winthorpe was heading back to return the man's motorcycle, a bright pair of illuminating headlights grew out of the distance behind him. Then, all of a sudden, it started to gain speed on him, and behind the wheel sat Crazy Mary as the vehicle swerved back and forth all over the road. I'm getting really sick of you, Winthorpe, meddling in my personal affairs, growled Crazy Mary as Jackson watched her quickly proceed to move in on her prey. Slow down, Mary, or we're all gonna die, said Jackson as panic overshadowed his face. Then, all of a sudden, Mary slammed her foot on the gas, aiming for the back tire, but Winthorpe quickly swerved, just in the nick of time, tricking Mary, then heading straight into the woods as bullets were being shot from the gun of Crazy Mary. God damn it, I almost had him, bellowed Crazy Mary, her nostrils flaring in anger. This is not over, not by a long shot, she said as she sped off into the distance. Meanwhile, back at the police station in Seattle, Washington, red and blue lights flashed brightly as sirens blared from an ambulance that sped off carrying an injured and bloody inmate inside. One hour had passed as Winthorpe finally arrived at his hotel room. Winthorpe had once again started to worry that Amanda would not show. I think I have failed you, David. I'm so sorry. I really had faith that Amanda might help, but it looks as if I were wrong. But then, out of nowhere, he heard a knock at his door. Miss Huffington, I'm ready to tell you everything, and trust me, it's a lot to tell. Meanwhile, back at the warehouse on the outskirts of town, What is it, Chandler? Please tell me. I have to hurry up and go, said Misty impatiently. Come here, said Chandler, his voice wispy and shallow as Misty walked over to him and kneeled down. Misty, you know how your father died when you were just an infant, asked Chandler. Yes. Of course, said Misty, her lips quivering. Well, he's not dead, and I know exactly where he is, he said. What? I don't understand. Then where is he? Tell me, Chandler, cried Misty. You're looking at him. I am your father, Misty. Wait. What? Meanwhile, back at the Marriott Hotel, Mr. Adams, here's everything I know, said Amanda, eagerly ready, yet nervously frightened. Wait, Miss Huffington, not here. I need a witness to what you're about to tell me. I need you to come back with me to Seattle and tell me this under oath. And we really need you to testify in court as well, said Winthorpe. I will only do this on one condition. You have to promise me protection. You have my word, Miss Huffington. I can't leave tonight though. My 
sister Marcella is coming in from out of town tonight and I need to be there when she arrives. I can leave in the morning though, she said. Okay, meet me at the airport at 6 a.m. sharp. One thing, Miss Huffington, be careful. Good night, Mr. Adams, said Amanda as she left the hotel and headed back home. Morning had arrived as Winthorpe anxiously waited at the airport. Come on, Miss Huffington, where are you? We need to be on this plane in the next 20 minutes, said Winthorpe, but back at the apartment of Amanda Huffington. As her elevator stopped, the doors opened slowly, and there stood crazy Mary. Mary, what are you doing here, she said as her heartbeat quickened. Well, look who it is, my old and loyal friend. But I'm not, shh. No need to explain a thing, honey. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. We're friends, right? Just make sure not to tell Winthorpe anything. Okay, said Crazy Mary, her mischievous smile untrustingly deceiving. Mary, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know any Winthorpe, she said, her voice hinting fear. Aw, oh, sure you do. No need to lie. Anyways, listen, I have to go. Come give your old friend a big old hug. Bring it, said Crazy Mary, hugging her tightly. Then, all of a sudden, the sharp blade of Mary's knife entered her victim's stomach. Please, Mary, no, she cried in pain, begging for her life. You should have never betrayed me, bitch. Rot in pieces, said the dark and twisted mistress of death as another stab of the blade of her knife ripped through the chest of her victim. Then one deep slice across her throat, severing her head as the headless body fell to the ground. It looked as if all hope was gone. But right outside of the warehouse was a cart belonging to the homeless man. And inside of that old rusty cart was something that would change everything. The laptop with the evidence. Saga continues with my girlfriend wants to kill me. Season 3, Episode 1, coming soon.